Coming up today on PTL, we break down the 2015 World Championship Finals. Listen to the pros in my check and spice up our lives in the Penta. Ich bin ein Berliner. Primetime League starts right now. Hooney will find a stun, but fails the flash. And Smith will be smiling with that one. Koo will get themselves the ace, will get themselves the base, and will earn themselves a shot at the Summoner's Cup. There's no stopping him now. It's time for SKT to make it to the finals undefeated. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Berlin, Germany. I'm Trevor Quickshot Henry, joined with David Freak Turley and Martin Deficio Lunger. Technically, you're in our hometown now, so welcome to Berlin, Freak. Uh, thanks. Uh, it's a bit cold, but I guess that's why they call it Berlin. Right, we're here in town for the World Championship Final. Let's take a look at the bracket and how we've got ourselves to this SKT versus Ku Tigers matchup. It is the first time that we're going to have a Korea versus Korea final, but it's technically the fifth Korean team that's actually made it to the World Championships. Uh, if you look down the list, there's been two Chinese teams that have made it, two European teams that have made it, both from season one still counts. Still counts. Uh, <laughs> and of course, zero from North America. So we will talk about the bracket in the finals, Deficio, in this you know Korea v Korea. Uh, I think obviously it's the two best teams we have here, especially SK Telecom has looked so dominant all season long here. Ku Tigers, I also say I was a little bit surprised they beat Fnatic so easily, but they definitely deserve to be here. Yeah, and SKT still not dropped a game. Are we yeah. going to see our first perfect run at World Champs? Uh, if you asked me last week, I probably would have said yes. Um, but the more I think about it, honestly, they've had a pretty easy run through the bracket so far, right? They had a slumping EDG with like the two worst top laners in the tournament practically, uh, plus Mega Titans, plus H2K. They're European, of course, and not very good. Um, and honestly, because like SKT have had one of the easiest brackets the whole way through because of EDG slumping. And so at this point, it's like here's their first like I would say really good test where like. Who might actually be on their level, well, or at least close to it. I certainly hope so, because you know we've got the stats guys back uh, stage talking to us. Samsung White technically had a high KDA despite having dropped the game. Samsung White also had a quicker average game time, mm -hmm. and the first iteration that won the World Championship, SKT, also had a faster game time. Deficio, are they looking to break any records in the finals? No, except right. for going 15-0, I guess, is the only one. I think uh, Samsung White will forever, in my heart, be the greatest team we've ever had in a World Championship. Well, I guess we'll find out on Saturday if your heart will be broken or not. But I mentioned <laughs> records very quickly. Uh, in terms of champions, in the semifinals, we saw two new guys uh, played, Zach and Nautilus. So that increases our unique number of champions to 74, which is a record breaker, highest number of unique champs at a world championship in our 69 games. Freak, is this purely because Gragas was disabled and everybody had to look at that, Zach? Um, I mean, yes. Like, ultimately, like, the, the reason Jungle Pool expanded because, like, the S tier went away, which, which lends credibility to the whole if we nerf the top three, then things finally show up. And so there's the evidence of that. I think there would have been more if Mordekaiser and Gangplank weren't so silly, mm -hmm. then we'd have more target bans, you'd branch it a bit more, right? If Tom Kench were banned in 80% of games, then you'd see more supports played out as well. Well, that sort of makes sense. We've seen a lot yeah. of champions already. It's already record setting. Mm -hmm. Deficio, you've been looking at so many theories for this final. Are we going to see new champs? Uh, I honestly don't think so. Because we have seen like Lissandra has been shown in a group stage. I think that was going to be one of the sleeper picks potentially for both teams. But honestly, we never really know because you can have that one special tactic where you need like a Teemo and then you will pick <laughs> yes. him for that, you know, last game where you're down 0-2. So potentially, maybe, you know, we can see one, but we're not expecting it. I mean, it's not Worlds without Singed, Corky and Jackson. It's hopefully those come out here. Otherwise, yeah. those are like, those are the only champions that like are going to have that streak broken. I should be curious. We just need complete new meta for the final. Complete basically. new meta. Complete that's new meta. It. We'll pull in Quintop. Top. Hey, I'm done. Quinn Top, that's Quinn. it. You never heard it your Quinn. first. We'll never see Quinn in Let's see if Quinn will join us in the final. I'll see you next year, bro. It's fine. Yeah. That's a deal. Okay. It is time for a World Championship Final Edition of Studs and Duds. Last week I chimed in with myself, but uh, there's only two teams with left yourself? in the final. With yourself? I did. I picked my own studs. I oh. picked my own duds. But, wow. Um, I, How'd that work out for you? I was not great. I was mm. overstepping my bounds, and now I'm just yeah. going to leave it to the professionals here. So Freak, Thanks. Mr. Knowledgeable, yeah. studs and duds, who are they and why? Uh, so big stud for me, SKT's top laner, Marin. 
Um, I think he came in a little bit underrated coming to the World Championship. To me, whenever I rate a player, I rate more than just their in-game performance, but what they bring to a team, either off the rift or sort of shot-calling-wise. And Marin, team captain, I mean, SKT is undefeated largely because of him. His shot-calling is absolutely great. Plus the fact that he's, like, statistically the best top player in the tournament by, by most measures. Um, highest CSD at 10, highest CSD at 20, uh, you know, top three in terms of damage and whatnot. So, I mean, this guy is just absolutely incredible. Meanwhile, <laughs> anything he can't do. <laughs> Marin, I, I, to, to me, Marin is, is probably the best player in the world. And that's, that's what I'm going to go thrust wow. with this one, is that Marin is so good. I think he's actually, as a total package, to build a team around Marin's the guy. Dud, yellow star. Speaking of building teams around a person, I mean, to be fair, he got fanatic top four at Worlds. But in terms of semifinal performance, yellow star got 3 0'd. He's one of the big voices on the team. The team tilted off the face of the earth in game three and played terribly. The fact that uh, game one, Fnatic were so far ahead and then threw it off some bad team fights. Game two, they came back from their deficit. Okay, props to that one. And then in the game, it was still winnable. Once again, lost in bad team fights. And, and, you know, he's getting the clutch calls right most of the time. But as your competition gets better, one or two mistakes is enough to lose you the game. And so Yellowstar, as a big voice, not leading the team well enough, is my dud. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's hard to hear as a European, yeah. but the truth is often harsh. Uh, Deficio, I know you were gushing about some of the support plays from the semi-final. So, your studs and duds. Uh, stud has to be Gorilla. Obviously, beat Yellowstar 3-0. Also one of the big voices on the Ku Tigers. But I mainly like the fact that Gorilla and Hojin together are like the backbone when it comes to setting up these very, very, very smart counter plays Ku Tigers have always been able to read where's the action going to happen, how do they counter it. I think Gorilla has shown a fantastic champion pool. I hope he even plays like Vega support in the, in the final. Potentially he was the guy who got it nerfed in the first place. <laughs> this guy can do like everything. He's a strong laner, he's great at roaming, he's fantastic in team fights. So I think he's like the to total package. And I would honestly say he's the best support in the world right now. So judging from semi-final, judging from the rest of the tournament, he's my start. Shout out to Smep. I mean, we have to do it. The guy was sure. amazing, but it was too easy to take him. You know, everyone else, everyone else will have him as a stud. You're not allowed two picks here. I'm just saying, You're not shout out, shout out. Everyone, <laughs> else, everyone else had Smep as a stud. Did you read the rules I, of I took yeah, come on. He took right. some. So, uh, hashtag the official lose, care. can't even follow the rules. I don't okay. think we're supposed to vote so, for this. No, I don't. I'm now cutting you off, and Fine. you can tell me who your dad is. My dad <laughs> is Rainover. And. Wow, picking a fanatic. I know, but. So, I'm Rainover. Also disappointed. If you look at the first 15 minutes, I'm like, MVP, wow, what a great performance in the games against Ku Tiger. Such a good start in the early game. However, whenever Fnatic had to make a play after 15 minutes, he was the guy in the front setting up the play and failing the play and taking the wrong decisions like the tower dive from game one. I think I'll probably rewatch that like 10 times now and I still cry. 17 minutes in, <laughs> tower dive in the bottom lane, five versus five, and he flashes in under the tower to take down an Alistar. Come on. Well, unfortunately, it did not work out. So we've heard our studs and duds, and I think it's about time to look back at those semifinals and listen to the pros in this week's edition of My Check. We had a good game last time. We just have to play the game, our game. Don't get frustrated. We played really, really good. We just have to play a bit better. Can you go in here? Yeah, we're coming. He actually walked into Okay, maybe we can get him. We can get him, we can get yeah. him. I, I got attack, him. I got, I got him. Good job. Okay, that's good. Just and reset. Just reset, reset, reset. Lishin, I am going to do it. Top Lulu, Ted, I think I care. Okay. Chigum and Gunnar, 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 Chigum Take your get me. Can you get mid now? I, I, I there is no way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Recall and go both. Recall and go both already. Flash. Or we lose both. Okay, we actually, lose I, I can maybe escape. We might lose both. We don't lose both. We don't lose both. Okay. It's fine. Okay. My bad. Can we get this in time? Nah. I'm recalling. Yeah. Chop chop. Pentagon. 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 Freeze, Mebu! I'm fighting top. No, oh, it's about to hit right now. Okay. We have plenty pressure, but. Oh, fuck, I'm dead. Yo, Pink. We're going to get a little bit of 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 
오케이 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 나이스 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 가자 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 렉사이 렉사이 천천히 렉사이 노블 죽었거든 뒤에 르블랑 온다 천천히 해 뒤에 르블랑 온 리븐 리븐 나이스 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 킬 싹, 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 킬 나이스 <목소리> Oh, we have to wait for five. You will have to wait for me, guys. Yep. Hey, 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 Absolutely love hearing from the players on stage and listening Nicer. to their calls. <laughs> we'll need to see how the guys are going to do in the championship final. It is, of course, Koo Tigers taking on SKT. And this is going to be a tough one for Koo because historically in the summer split, Koo Tigers went down 0-4, didn't lose mm -hmm. any of their games. Uh, they only got two dragons across the four games. They lost in an average of 33 minutes. And SKT had an 8-plus KDA. Now, to be fair, these teams did not meet in the playoffs where Koo Tigers did step up. But they did in spring and the final 3 0 SKT. That's a well. long time ago. I'm just ago saying, to I'm just saying, last time we made a best out of five was also a 3 0 SK Telegram. But now, can you not but deny. It was also a. <laughs> it was a 3 0. Okay? You're like already saying it's going to okay. be 3 0 SKT. No, no, no. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Also. I'm just saying. Last time also best 3 0 is literally what you inferred. Fine. <laughs> Whatever. Move on. So let's step back. Let's step there. back. I say historically. 7-0 uh, in favor of SKT over Koo throughout the year. Mm -hmm. But Koo are looking stronger and stronger, Freak. Every time they've showed up on the stage, there's been questions and doubters. They've quelched a lot of the naysayers. Yeah. Um, and I think showing up against Fnatic is a very big statement ahead of their final. Yeah, Koo definitely showed up. I think Koo are... Um, I think Koo are probably getting the correct amount of praise right now, right? Like 3-1 over KT, 3 over Fnatic. Um, Smeb is the literal highest damage per minute top laner in the tournament. Uh, I mean, it's a true three threat team, and like even close than SKT is, where like the three damage dealers are all in like three damage per minute of each other, which is like ridiculously close, but they're all at, like basically 580. Um, and honestly, Koo are also uh, the very best team at growing gold leads from 10 to 20. It's like, they're on average behind. Like, they're behind more than they're ahead at 10 minutes, but these guys are still able to grow a very big lead uh, between 10 and 20. And they do more. They grow more than SKT does. And hmm. in theory, this is enabled by a lot of the individual players, right? Because as a team, you know, we've seen Koo, they play from behind. We've heard the story so many times. So let's actually go lane by lane, starting with supports, working our way up to the pista resistance of Smeb v Marin. So, Wolf versus Gorilla. Deficio, what's your take on these two players and, and how they're going to impact? I mean, Gorilla was your stud at the end of the day. Yeah, and I think this is one of the lanes or one of the positions where Koo has an advantage over SK Telecom. I think Gorilla is a better overall support than Wolf, but Wolf is still very good at doing exactly what SKT needs from him. Because when he needs to sit in lane and be safe with Bang, he will. It's very rare you see him like, go all in and lose a 2v2 trade, he just sits back. He's very good at moving around the map as one, well, being like, okay, then maybe they're going to dive Marin top. He recalls, he goes top lane, he sits ready, and then he just recalls and goes back to bottom lane. So you don't often see him too much in the early game, but then when it comes to starting team fights, it's often him being on the main engage. And I think he's definitely gotten a lot better. He was one of the guys we looked at at MSI and said he was a weak link on SK Telecom, but he's improved over the summer split. Maybe it helped him that Pickaboo left the team. I don't know if the pressure off made it easier <laughs> for him to perform. But Gorilla, for me, is just the best support in the world. And he's, again, he's the key member for, for Koo Tigers when it comes to getting back. Because he can either play disengage or he can play the heavy engage. He knows how to be part of these roams with Hojin, set up these skirmish and ganks. And like, if he plays well and he gets to roam out of the side of the laning phase, I think that's one of the ways Koo Tigers can win the early game. 
that's a very, very big can because SK Telecom is gonna, probably going to win every single early game. Oh, yeah. strong words. Every single early game. Yeah, yeah, early game, I completely agree. As an AD carry main free, yeah. let's look at the AD carries, bang and pray in conjunction with the supports. Now we can toy with these 2v2s or we can talk mm -hmm. with the 1v2s with roaming support. How are Bang and Prey going to measure up against one another and impact the rest of the map? Uh, measuring up against each other doesn't seem to mean very much. As far as sort of 2 on 2 lane matchups, you don't see a lot of them. It's like pretty heavily lane swapped for both these teams. Yeah. And honestly, like, even still, like, neither of them have like that impressive laning stats anyway. Like, the top AD carry laners are still like Niels and Co, right? So like, these guys are just kind of chilling there with like minus one CSD in Bang's mm -hmm. case. And like... And that was the, the same thing coming into the tournament. Because yeah. the three Korean teams, we had mm -hmm. basically all of them had more focus on top lane than AD carry. So that has remained the same. Marin and Smith gets right. all the attention. AD carries are basically just pushing waves and pushing towers for most <laughs> yes. of the early game. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's at a very high level of play with, with very good top laners and, and just sort of how League of Legends works at a professional level. You really want consistency out of that role. And these guys are both very, very consistent. Mm -hmm. They're veterans. I mean, Bang was... Probably still is KDA leader. I didn't check actually this morning. Yeah, but should be. Yeah, probably still KDA leader. Uh, I mean, Prey has been actually quite good at that as well. He's been the worlds before. He's very consistent. So, I mean, these are basically plug and play AD carries, but very consistent AD carries who are strong mechanically and they'll yeah. just do fine. Play. I, I think that's a great, uh, great concept for the AD carry role yeah, within I, these two I mean, teams. One thing though is with the 2v2 lane, if you look at Ku Tigers like doing the, the summer split and one of the changes they made coming into playoffs where they got a lot better was that Gorilla said, you know what, I'm not going to roam. You know, Smeb and Hojin can do whatever they want on top side. I'm going to sit in lane with Prey. And we're going to try and win that 2v2 lane. And they play like Kennen support. We haven't seen it too much from Gorilla though at this tournament, but they started playing like these aggressive lanes. They did really well on Prey, got a lot of farm, and he started having more of an impact in team fights. They've kind of gone a little bit away from that again. Gorilla is now more trying to join the early fights. Okay. So it depends on what strategy you want to play. Do they want to go with the risky, you know? Well, talking about strategy, yeah, we'll get to that and, and yeah. analyze the teams a little later. I want to stick with these lanes now because we knew though that Faker will be starting in the mid lane against Kuro. We know Easy Hoon sitting on the back burner. Easy Hoon won 3-0 in the spring split against Ku when they, uh, yes, when they won yeah. uh, in, in the spring finals. Mm -hmm. So what is this mid lane matchup? Are we even going to see Easy Hoon? Um, I don't think they need Easy Hoon. No. So Faker said in his interview before the semifinal, uh, that Easy Hoon is more aggressive than he is in lane. I don't think that's true from what I've seen. Faker's got, actually, now that Hoon's had a few more games under his belt, Faker's got actually pretty significantly higher CSD at 10, for example. And we were seeing Febivan already beat up Kuro. Like, you remember his cast in a game, he was down like 25 CS yeah. pretty early on in the game. And Faker can do even more. Like, Faker's statistically even a better laner than Febivan was. Febivan's number two, but Faker's number one here. Uh, so I think pushing in Kuro all the time, not letting him TP out, which is how he was getting back into these games, it was how they were beating KT, was that he was running better than Nagne. If Kuro can't get around the map, then that's a really good thing for SKT. Faker's good at doing that. Faker can take the victor and push mid forever at all times and punish every roam, and this is all like good things in SKT's favor. And despite the fact Kuro was against Febivan <laughs> and had some troubles in the semifinal, it didn't really impact the flow of the game. So it's is Kuro going to stay relevant against SKT? Yeah, I mean, that's the key thing, right? Kuro doesn't play for the laning phase. He yeah. brings teleport not to go back to base and TP back to his tower and get more farm. He does it so he can join the side lane fights whenever it's going on. You, know, you, see, you see time and time again, Smeb and Koro instant TP to one lane and there's like this five man happening from Koo Tigers because they do well when they're five together. You know, friendship and everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. having fun. <laughs> they don't do extremely well if it's one versus one except for maybe Smeb, Smeb versus whatever top lane in the world. Uh, so Koro definitely is going to aim more to impact side lanes. That's where Faker can pressure him. Yeah. Easy Hoon, I almost feel, can do exactly the same. Okay, and yeah, I, would, can. I would say Easy Hoon, when it comes to playing like control mages like Azir, is probably still better than Faker. But then again, Faker will bring so many different counter picks, even bring more aggressive lanes or uh, aggressive lane picks, yeah. where he can maybe even get a solo kill. Well, I want to talk about pressure because in the jungle, there's pressure on Bengi. He's the only other uh, previous World Championship winner along with Faker that could be getting themselves a second Summoner Cup. Mm -hmm. Coming up against Hojin. And let's be honest, Hojin was shown up in the quarterfinals against Score. I don't think mm -hmm. he had a great early game. So what yeah. about this matchup? What is Bengi going to do to Hojin? Uh, so I think Bengi's got a big lead here. So <clears throat> when we talk about Korean junglers, I want to bring out something real quick is that Korean junglers really play for the ganks. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at uh, CSD, CS differential at 10, for the junglers, the bottom two are these two junglers in the finals right here, right? Uh, literally number eight is Hojin, number seven is Bangi here. And, e and, and the thing is, so they're, they're spending all their time ganking instead of farming. SKT are still like 11 and one in first bloods, right? They're still getting first blood, um, you know, all the time. Now the thing is, Ku Tigers 
have less than 50% first blood. They're yeah. five and six. So their jungler is literally the worst farming jungler <laughs> in the quarterfinals, and they're still not getting first blood. So, I mean, you just look at these metrics, and yeah. you're like, clearly Bengi's doing way more. Um, Hojin has this weird play style, where instead of directly ganking, he will sit in the bush and he will be like, wait, he'll just, you know, throw out the fishing pole and be like, okay, come on, enemy jungle, wait, <laughs> yeah. ah, you're here, you're here. And then the guy shows up in bot lane and kills his support or something, he's like, ah, okay, well, go back to jungle, do like one camp, go back, wait in, in a lane. Like, he's really patient sitting there, waiting and waiting and waiting, but he's not always as effective. And I think like the Zach pick for them in the, in the semifinal was saying, okay, we are going to get out jungle in the early game anyway. Let's just get one of the best scaling junglers and then win team fights. And like, Hojin is cool Tigers in many ways. Okay. Not the strongest early game. He's not going to risk too much with his ganks and he's going to get like scaling and be strong in team fights. That's what Hojin does really well. And that's what he has to be able to do. So the rest of the team needs to realize they're going to be behind if, at like 10, 15 minutes. Well, we talked about the rest of the team. Ku Tigers know how to play from behind because mm -hmm. they've done it so many times, even in this tournament. Yeah. And the matchup that everybody's looking forward to, Morin v. Smeb. As your stud, Freak, Morin yeah. in the top lane, is <laughs> Smeb going to keep him in control or is Morin just going to ruffle stomp this one too? I think as far as individual 1v1s go, I think this is actually quite close. Um, you know, Marin is obviously doing it well. He's actually highest gold share, uh, like, for all top players. They give him in everything. The right, he gets, he gets everything. everything. Well, he carries uh, the whole yeah, team. Yeah, sure, right? It's worth it, right? But right, he gets yeah. everything. He but gets, hang on, is he the shot caller? Is he saying, give it to right. me? Or is the team playing around? I mean, it's himself? a mix of the two, right? Okay. Like, the thing is, uh, as a shot caller, and I've had some experience doing this on, like, you know, lower level competition, because I'm so vocal, I'm very used to talking to my jungler and saying, oh, yeah, show up here. I know this opportunity's up. Not all players are innately vocal, right? So sometimes you just, like, you're just better at giving information. So the game works this way. It's not necessarily a flaw. It's just that he's better than the rest of his team. I don't speak Korean. I don't know what they're doing, but that's, that's a theory. <laughs> that's a theory. Um, okay, okay. So there you go. There, there's, there's 30 seconds for nothing at all, guys. Uh, but honestly, yeah, Marin, he's getting the ganks, though, right? It's working with Bangi. He's doing plenty of damage. Smeb is close to as good as him, though. To Fisher, will Smeb beat him? Uh, I'm going to say yes. Wow. If, if we get a one versus one. But the problem is when you play against SK Telecom, it's never one versus one. Because then Bengi's there. Then Wolf has recalled and run up all the way up to top lane. And there are always guys around who can help Marin. He gets so, much res so many resources. He gets pink wards. He gets everything to help him obviously get a lead. And it's, it's a very smart tactic. I think... What Smep does really well is not necessarily his lane control in terms of farm. He often falls a little bit behind in farm. But when it comes to finding that one-on-one -on -one opening where someone makes a mistake, he, he will punish find you, it. boom, instantly. Like Huni was up like 20, 30 CS on Riven, and then he made one mistake, and Smep punished. kills him, boom, yeah. and then he snowballs out of control. I think Smep can do that. I think he has to do that. If Kutai is going to win, it's about Smep well, beating Marin in that one-on-one. A little later, we're going to talk about some of the tactics and some mm -hmm. of the decisions that's going to let them do it. And I'm also going to ask you guys for your predictions on whether or not Smeb is going to overcome Marin and SKT and pick up that win or not. But Freak, I think yeah. you have to talk about Twitter. Yes, I do. Guys, I have predictions that you guys are going to bring out. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Twitter segment of PTL here. Let's talk about last week's question, which was which two teams will make it to the finals? If you guys are watching the episode at all, you would know those teams are SK Telecom T1 and the Ku Tigers. If you didn't know, well, I guess now you do, so congratulations on that one. And 20 of you got that one right, and that means I am disappointed in 20 of you for not having any faith whatsoever in Europe. But, I mean, I guess you're right, so I guess you should be disappointed in me. Either way, the Hall of Fame question was who's going to have the most kills, and of course I had Faith in Europe and said Fnatic, uh, AD carry reckless, that was wrong. But the most kills and how many kills they got, the actual correct answer was Ku Tigers mid laner Kuro with 24. None of you got that one right, so moving on without that. But let's move on to this week's question. And this one is going to be about the top lane. And it's which of the two top lane is going to have the highest KDA in the finals? I'm going to guess Marin from SKT. And to get in the Hall of Fame, tell us what the exact KDA of that player will be. And I'm going to guess that Marin's KDA is 7. If you guys get it right, welcome to the Hall of Fame. If you just get the player, 50-50 chance. Better than Spawn, at least you'll be in the credits in some way. All right, so top laners is where it's at for Twitter. And Deficio, mm -hmm. you said Smeb could win the one-on-one. -on -one. I think one of the big things to talk about is how he's going to do that. We've got five things to talk about when we talk about team strategy. Mm -hmm. And I want to break them down. Picks and bands, laning, vision, team fighting, decision making. Let's start with picks and bands. And Deficio, which team do you think is the advantage at? SKT or Ku? So SK Telecom is a very simple team in many ways in the pick and ban phase. We haven't seen too many surprise picks coming in from them. It's, it's fairly standard what they are picking. Yeah. 
Cool Tigers, on the other hand, is a team who is known a bit more for being innovators. You know, they have some, should we call them cheese picks here and there. The Zach was like a big surprise. Cheese. You don't like cheese? No. Okay. No, I like cheese, the but call it cheese. The baguette said then. Unique strategies. Unique yes. strategies. Look, I prefer coming in. When you bring out something unprepared, that's just awesome. I and, and I do agree. Hey. Cool Tigers is definitely known for this one. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think cheesing is like the equivalent of four pooling, which doesn't exist here in League of Legends. So, <laughs> oh like, I mean, honestly, like, no, I agree with you. I know it's not the place for that discussion, but either way, yes, I, I do, do agree with you completely. I had a rant in LCS uh, talking about the, the term and how I agree with you. you it was just a strategies. small, fun term to move on and say they had some surprise picks. All right. Normally, I'm still expecting Vega support from Gorilla. We saw the Zac from Hojin. They can pull out some surprises in their Pinger Man face that could maybe. Maybe surprise SK Telecom, but then again, they probably scrimmed each other for such a long time, and I'm sure they know most of the picks. And freak these surprises if they do get pulled out. How's this going to impact the laning phase? I remember you talking about mm -hmm. lane swaps being quite a thing for both of these teams earlier in the show. So, what's your opinion on the early game lane swaps and decision making for both squads? Uh, I think this actually favors SKT because lane swaps are pretty hard to get wrong if you're a top level team. I expect them to go pretty close to equal. And so when it comes down to it, you just have the only heads-up matchup left is mid lane. And okay, you have to be a bit safe because maybe you don't know where the jungler is, things like this. But essentially, everyone is equal except for the fact that mid laner is getting destroyed by Faker. And so that just, to me, like already tips it in the favor of SKT. Um, also, the fact that even if it is normal lanes, Q Tigers are one of the worst early game teams in here. I mean, they, they are behind more often than they are ahead. And they're 10 and 3. So. That is true, <laughs> but the next tenant in our discussion is Vision, and Ku has traditionally been pretty good at warding and using some of that Vision decision-making to bounce back. I mean, uh, their Ash uh, with uh, uh, Hawkshot, for example, is yeah. one of the most talked about things. How does Vision match up uh, Freak and then Deficio? Pretty well for Ku. I would say it's close. Um, I didn't come in like looking at the stats for Sightstone timers, but I know uh, these are both Sightstone junglers, as pretty much everyone is anyway. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, SKT focuses a lot of their vision around mid lane. It's a lot of it is setting up Faker. Uh, a lot of it is when he goes and plays Rise. They set him up for the one on one kills. Like it's 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 not entirely focused around him, but like there is a fair bit of setup for that lane in particular. Uh, sure. Whereas that and top lane. Yeah, basically. right. So those are the two pressure points for yeah. them. And and Ku, uh, honestly, could go to any of those places. So they could they could try to pick on bottom lane because they know. Mm -hmm. Uh, SKT won't try to ward there as much, it's a possibility. We have very different strategies when it comes to warding from both teams. Ku Tigers, obviously because they are more passive, have very defensive pink wards in place. To try and spot, you know, okay, are you coming down to dive our bot lane, then we move down everyone in the jungle. They use it against Fnatic extremely well to spot, okay, when were Fnatic sending five guys somewhere to kill them, and they would be ready to counter gang it and like use that to get some kills and get team fights going. That's how they like to ward. SK Telecom is a lot more offensive. In the way, they like to take over the river, especially with pink wards towards the top side, as you said, so near mid lane and towards Marin up there to make sure they can do really, really well. And then you just keep pushing that ward line further into the enemy jungle. And it allows you to be proactive in the early to mid game. It allows you to take the right fights like SKT wants to do. They're not a team fighting team. They're more like one-on-one, -on -one, 2v2. And you need that aggressive vision to get these fights properly, otherwise Ku Tigers is going to be ready with five guys and... But Ku Tigers is a team fighting team. It is. So we have skirmish versus team fight, which is the fun part. If Ku so Tigers can spot them coming... Will they win their team fights? I think Ku Tigers, the way for them to yeah. win this game, basically, is through team fights. If they can spot when SKT is sending Wolf and, and Bengi to dive top lane with Marin and be there to counter gang and get a 3v3 or 4v4, yeah. that's how Ku Tigers can win. So they need the defensive vision, SKT needs to deny that, and it's going to be so many fights going around, you know, when Ward's in the river, and who takes over Ward. I absolutely agree. I think that's what this game kind of boils down to. Like, once SKT are ahead, I mean, they smell blood. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got a player named Wolf on the roster. These guys are, <laughs> these guys are coming after you. Uh, I mean, it, yes, it, it's going to be a very aggressive, like, from 15 minutes on for SKT. They're going to get ahead. They're going to start going for those skirmishes, and Q have to find some way to not get wrecked by 20 mm -hmm. minutes. If they don't, then Q Tigers can come online and do the things that they're known to do. But that's, that's the big test, is how do you survive the first 15 against SKT? So pick some bands, niche picks for Q. Laning phase can kind of go either way. No, no, no. no Vision, SKT. SKT. Vision okay. Clash of Styles. Okay. Then you've got the team style. Q is, uh, you know, bouncing mm -hmm. back from behind and late. The decision making is what's allowed Ku to bounce back from their weak and slow early. Yeah? Yeah. Freak, you're adamant there's... Not much so, chance in the uh, final here for SKT. I, I mean, here's, here's the thing. It's like, I know last week I said, oh yeah, Ku are going to try to bounce back, but I know Fnatic are good shot color, so if Fnatic gets ahead, they're going to be fine. And then Ku won game one anyway. Everybody thought Fnatic right, was going right. to be fine. A SKT, you know, comes in, oh, they crush when they're ahead really well, and then I haven't seen them come from behind. Well, they also came from behind against Origin over in game one. So, like, both these teams have ways of coming back from behind, so I, I no longer have, like, a really easy measuring stick for, like, oh, they just suck when they're losing the game already. Um, 
so I don't know. I think it's going to be close. I do want to give Ku some credit. I think they do stand a chance here, but I think it is pretty heavily SKT favored. Yeah, I definitely think their decision making is what has made SK Telecom beat Ku Tigers so much in the past. Because Ku Tigers play around you having shitty decision making and making a mistake. So they're like, oh, Fnatic, you're going to dive now this tower. That was a big mistake. We counter you, we win the fight, and like three, four kills on our castle lane, and we move on. SK Telecom is a team who rarely makes any bad decisions as a team. It can be like one guy overextending yeah. and dying, that happens. You can build a bunch of leads right. by like these gangs. Exactly. But. The big five on five, why did you just do Baron here? Why did you just go for this dive that was stupid? Rarely happens. And that's why when they get the lead in the early game, they don't tend to lose it to Ku Tigers. Ku Tigers don't get the opening. And that's been a big problem. They have to find something new. Or they need to hope that SK Telecom, for some reason, is making a ton of mistakes in the mid-game in, in terms of their decision-making for Kudagas to bounce back. Well, gentlemen, we've spoken extensively about the individual players. We've spoken about the team strengths and weaknesses. And with this little toy, I think it's about time to start Death Timers. And welcome back to my favorite part of the show, loud noises and loud arguments. It's time for <laughs> death timers. Before we get to today's question, somehow you guys out there in internet land voted for pastry time to win last week's death timer. Who was he With against? his pitiful, pitiful oh, defense okay, okay, of origin. Okay, okay. So it was basically just I will admit it was a superior combatant to Freak, yeah, exactly. but his argument was weak. Dude, I don't understand. I mean, like, I was actually correct. I know. He's like, oh yeah, or he so, literally said like, Origin basically can't win. And I was like, no, Kuta is really this, what, you know what, you guys are... So let me, let me explain the rules to Deficio here. 45 seconds from when I say go, each of you will get one team to argue how they will win the 2015 World Championship. It'll be mm -hmm. Ku Tigers or SKT. Mm -hmm. SKT will be on the blue side for games one, three, and five. Factor that into your decision making as the games will play out. And of course, uh, to make things fair, I do have a coin here that I'm gonna flip to determine who is going to get okay. which team. Okay. All right. So, okay. so what, what are the sides? So that is gonna be heads. Okay, so and then two, the two euros. That's gonna heads. be tails. Can I see? All right. And then... You know how coin tosses work, oh, gentlemen. I just want to earn two euros. That was all. Right. So. <laughs> Uh, heads or tails, call it in the air. Ku Tigers, no matter what. That wasn't an option. I don't <laughs> care. I will take Ku Tigers, because I know you want SKT, you want the easy one, like you had well, last week, I and mean, you, still right last you still managed to lose. You still managed to lose last time. I don't even care time. about the vote, I right. 45 right. seconds, gentlemen, you gentlemen, say go. Gentlemen, you're taking my job now. We got a little I mean, excited. We're better at it than you are. We're so. going to start with the Ku Tigers uh -huh. and Deficio. Death time is starting. Three, two, one, go. So, Ku Tigers, red side, three games. That means they can get a counter pick for Smep in the top lane. They're going to use that to make sure Smep can win the one versus one against Morin as long as they control the top side of the map. That's going to be strategy number one. Strategy number two, I think they can run, is a siege composition with Vega, either support or mid lane. Give me a Jinx AD carry. And what you do is you play around the bottom side first, then you move that AD carry to the mid lane, and you start hard sieging on Vega's Rise, who has no proper wave play outside of his ulti. You take down towers, you, you get a big. Rise comes in as though he could play anything else. <laughs> That's what he's going to pick. Don't worry. He's okay. going to buy and pick it. He's going to buy it. This is my 45 how seconds. Many games? <laughs> game one. They're going to win that. Rise. They're going to get a big lead. Smep doesn't have to do anything in that game. He will then carry the rest of the games, and they can still win. <laughs> Done. Wow. You so stole my 45 AMK's seconds. Game <laughs> there we go. He's looking to snap AMK's to game one of the two seconds. Oh, shut up. You know Maybe you should watch the rise. segment and realize what happens every time. Right, okay. I'm just playing so, Toby. I must admit, that is a significantly better argument than what I heard from Pastry Time last week. Which means he's going to lose now. And you guys at home will need to decide who you think will win. I even gave you two options. We have heard Freak's oh, argument for SK Telecom. Your death timer starts in three, two, one, go. First of all, like I said last time, it could actually happen. So already votes in my favor but honestly SKT are already 12 and no I mean just the plot armor of the perfect run through of worlds I mean that's enough to prove that Ku can't win either we saw the plot armor for C9 back in week one it's gonna continue here honestly it, it's the, the, the players, C9? yeah yeah exactly <laughs> but either way I mean still one more games in H2K <laughs> either way uh, honestly this is this is um, a team where individual skill-wise they get to mismatch. Faker's going to crush Kuro, and a bunch of you say, oh, he's going to TP out of his lane. He's going to TP out of his lane and lose his turret. Like, SKT is going to, I think, crush a lot of laning phases. Marn is a total package, going to do more than Smeb. Smeb can hope to play as well. I know you think he's going to win. That's cute you think so. It's not going to be the case here. Player skill-wise, the fact that the early game is so f 
crushing. That so, was probably the worst I've ever heard. <laughs> you <laughs> start with 20 seconds of nothing and then that. To be uh -huh. fair, I interjected as well as an impartial mm -hmm. host. Yeah, in impartial. That's, that's my but bad. But if I've learned anything, Hashtag it's that if you give a terrible win. argument, you win anyway. So pastry time, give me that blessing, homie. Come Let's on. find out. You guys at home need to tell us who has won death timers for the World Championship edition of PTL. Jump onto Twitter, vote at LOL Esports with the hashtags Deficio1. Don't do that. If you think he is going to be proving Ku Tigers can That's do it. That's with an S, by the way. Or if you think hashtag Freak1 with SKT and that terrible, terrible defense of Cloud9 and Plot Armor or something. <laughs> vote now who won Death Timers. It's me. And it is that time of the show where I put you guys on the spot and ask for your actual predictions. We've broken down player matchup, teams, death timers. I want to know who is going to win the 2015 League of Legends World Championship and in what score, Deficio? Uh, SKT is going to win. That's the easy one. Wow, hashtag Deficio. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and yeah, we're going to do 3-1. Mm -hmm. Two tires will take one game. Which game? It doesn't even matter. <laughs> They're gonna take one Which game. Which game? First game. Who tires okay. are surprised? Okay. Because Smep gets a counter pick, and they run my Vegar Jinx Siege comp, and like it all. Your your my comp? my comp. <laughs> I'm watching them play. Freak. It's now yours. Their comp. Three one. SKT. I'm, I'm sensing a little bit of saltiness after the <laughs> He's super loss salty of death all the time. <laughs> so freak for your prediction of your 2015 world champion. Yeah. SK Telecom T1 from South Korea, 15-0 the dream, undefeated world championship. That's my prediction. Well, drop it like it's hot. Uh, the games will begin on Saturday with the opening ceremony kicking off at 12 noon Berlin time. Be sure to tune in. Check out lolesports.com for the time zone conversion in your local region. Right, now this week's edition of Primetime League is locked in. It's time to turn to a pepper-powered penta. And of course, it's called Pepper Powered because I am being punished for putting myself in a predicament. Uh, when I did the hot pepper highlight on PTL a few months ago, I made a comment in the thread where if a European team, a la Fnatic, made semi-finals, I'd eat a hotter pepper. Earlier this week, Reddit reminded me of my transgressions mm -hmm. and now I need to pay. And in honor of uh, Faker's Rise, we too are bringing ghost peppers. So, tons of damage. And, Basically. and hold on a second. Freak has manned up and agreed to do this with me. So thank you, Freak. You're welcome. Meanwhile, Deficio chickened up. out. No, I was asked, do you want to be part of this? Basically. And I was like, yes, I like Trevor Quickshot Henry. Deficio works with the guy, apparently doesn't. So we this... arrived today at the studio, <laughs> and basically they announced two things. One, Trevor is getting punished for being stupid and being a non-believer, and basically saying that it was weird if Fnatic made top four, therefore he will get one. And for punishment for going 0-10, no, the NA caster will I, also get one. I, I predicted to walk two out. Western teams top four. There you go. Well, so I was ready for that. Ladies and gentlemen, a ghost pepper. <clears throat> Thank you, Deficio. You may now Thank leave the you. set. Oh, I'm going to join in on this. For the record, oh, this is horrible. Okay. This is about 10, Defender, right? 10 to 20 times more powerful than the habanero. Mm-hmm. Let's mm. go. All right. Penta. <laughs> Fuck. Coming in at number five. Kuzmep finishes off Hooney in a 1v1 knockout. Hooney gonna pick a fight once more with Smeb and Grand Challenge throws down. Smeb flashes away from the third proc of the Broken Wings. Hooney will find a stun, but fails the flash! And Smeb will be smiling with that one. Rip rocking in number four. Kuz Kuro picks up the quadra kill. <coughs> Smeb will not find the kill, and Fevervin jumps in the pit. They've traded AD carry for support, but Fevervin's down as well. Reckless needs to survive and tank. The shields are there, but there may not be enough. He's flashed out, and Kuro chases him. That's a triple looking for more. Huni's getting run down, and Huni will not find anything. A quadra for Kuro. <clears throat> it gets so warm. At number three, it was Fnatic's yellow stop with the moves onto Kuz, Kuro. And they do get something. That's the play. Yellow Star flashes the baby cage, knocks Kuro into Rainover's waiting hands, and Febbervin 
sends the soldiers for the kill. The ultimate displacement from behind your mid turret to the middle of the lane. Nothing Kuro can do to stop that one. Good counterplay by Fnatic. Very little you can do as a mid laner when they're coming between two towers and knocking you so far back into the lane. Galloping at number two, Kuz. Smeb. <coughs> Brought on an off. It's a lot of pain. It's <coughs> 1v3. <laughs> We even heard Yerza say, oh, let's see what happens top. All right, let's throw everything and the sink at Smith. He's already chunked Huni down. The flay comes out. Oh, on sort of shadows. Man. Smith's got one and he's not done. He's looking for Yellowstar and Rain over. And ladies and gentlemen, if Huni wasn't tilted already, that may be the play that does it. Our number one play this week was Origin Soaz with the great escape. We know he leveled it up early. Also has a ward. Does get hit though, he's slowed. And he's missing a turret, so here comes Bangi. He's gonna flash for the slow, which means Soaz has to burn it preemptively, and he gets his right. Bangi goes the wrong way, Soaz goes back in on Amarin, and the stun is still available. The Q comes in, gets some damage down, but where's his team gonna be? There's no one around right now. He's still running away through the wards. Pops summoner teleport. Oh, Soaz makes the great escape. Soaz is a god. Who's spicy? It was horrible. It's not going away, which sucks. <laughs> I regret my decisions.